Are you looking for a fun and informative podcast all about training working dogs? Look no further than the LWDG Pod Dog. This weekly show is hosted by me, Joanne Perrot, founder of the Ladies Working Dog Group, and I chat to experienced trainers and experts in the field who will give you helpful tips and advice. Whether you're just getting started or you've been working dogs for years, this podcast will have something for you. So pull up a chair, pour yourself a cup of coffee, and tune in to LWDG Pod Dog, and let us help you build a better bond with your best friend. Hello and welcome to another episode of LWDG Pod Dog. This episode we are going to be talking about the Ladies Working Dog Group Working Dog Certificate and how we use it to encourage and promote working dogs. Joining me for this podcast is the amazing LWDG Group expert Claire Denya. How are you today Claire? I'm very good Jo, thank you. Before we start talking all about our Working Dog Certificate, would you like to tell everybody a little bit about yourself and where they can find you etc.? Yes, so I am Claire Denya and with my husband John we run Family Dog Services based in Maidstone in Kent and we're behavioural trainers but we predominantly work with gun dogs. We're just really passionate about what we do and about how to help owners get the best out of their gun dog breeds Um, but we do work with all breeds of dogs, not just gun dogs but predominantly gun dogs. Now, I work closely with lots of the experts, but I think probably me and you won't work more closely than others because you are the judge for our Ladies Working Dog Group Working Dog Certificate. Um, plus, like for today, it's very, very hot outside, so we are smashing through a million podcasts. So we yeah. do stuff together quite a lot, don't we? We do, we do. When we started Ladies Working Dog Group Working Dog Certificate, why did we set them up? Well, the the idea was being discussed. We were talking about doing something that that, that the members and the ladies of the Ladies Working Dog Group could get involved with. And I think we, during COVID, did some little challenges, didn't we? Little video online challenges. And it kind of gave us an idea about how we could put together um, actually certificates that people could earn with their dogs, but by doing their entries online, Um, So not needing to see a judge in person, um, but to be able to enter the certificates online. And we decided that it would be really good to have different level certificates for different stages to give the ladies something to work towards. Now, the fun challenges, they're still available in our courses section on the website and people still go back and enjoy them today. The working dog certificate, though, is just a chance, like you said, to do something online. And we just start to do it in person, but we can talk about that a little bit later. But doing something online. So it's a chance for you to see how your dog's going without the pressure of being surrounded by other people, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, A lot of people get really nervous about doing any form of test or assessment. Um, So we felt that doing it online meant that people from all over the country and even in other countries could actually enter um, and takes a little bit of pressure off as well. They've got time to video their entries and send them in um, and then obviously await the announcements of of letting know who's passed. And everybody, I think, waits patiently but very nervously to see if they've passed because although they are built to take the pressure off the owner there's still a high level certificate on there even in foundation we're asking for basic standards so i suppose would be the beginning of being able to take your dog anywhere near a shoot absolutely so the ladies working dog group certificate foundation level includes eight different criterias so that includes some loose lead walking slash heel work, um, but it's not off lead, it's all on a lead. Um, demonstrating a recall. It's got a little set six day exercise in there. Um, an informal retrieve. So we just want to look at the dog's desire to retrieve. Um, a marked retrieve that requires steadiness. A memory retrieve. And then a little very foundational level stop whistle exercise and also 
some very simple hunting as well. So it's it's really strong foundations, um, but something for everybody to start with. I think it reflects the feeling within our entire group. The foundations are key to everything else with a working dog. When people start with us, who can start the this, this certificate and, and what are the criteria for eligibility? So for the foundation level, it is found that it is foundations. So it is really geared for new or novice level um, gun dogs and their owners. And well, when we first launched it, we sort of put an age cap on it, but we removed the age cap, didn't we, recently, because we realised there were people coming into this with older dogs that actually wanted to start and, and needed to start at the foundation level. But it's open to any gun dog breed, any cross breed, and in fact, any breed at all. So you could do it with your Cavalier, you could do it with your Bichon, you could do it with anything, really. It doesn't have to be a gun dog and it doesn't have to be KC registered either. So any literally anybody can have a go at this. And I think that's really nice because recently I went to an event where it was said gun dog types and I was like, what about all the other types that just make amazing gun dogs? And you know, what is a gun dog type in this day and age? Because you see quite a range of different dogs out on shoots now. It's not as it used to be where they were very much traditional KC registered breeds. The foundation level, obviously we're open to everyone now. When you go on then to the sort of novice and intermediate, do the criteria change at all? Yes, yeah, so the criteria does change and it, it does get harder. So in the novice level, we do actually have some steadiness to moving objects. So thrown dummies in that steadiness one. Um, we also have some directions in there. So you're out, your left, your rights and your backs in there as well. We want to see a little bit more from the stop whistle and the hunting is a little bit more challenging as well. So the novice is still very foundational, but with the additions, of some directional work and just advancing slightly some of the other things as well. And we built it in we sort of the hot mess handler. If you've done that training, what you've done in that training, in the homeworks, in the bonus exercises, etc., that's then reflected in these levels so that if you're doing one, you can then sort of grade yourself, can't you, by going for the certificates. Yeah, it, it gives you a progression ladder and something to aim towards to achieve with your dog. Uh, and I think it's not done at such a fast pace that you're jumping literally from a foundation level to really advanced gun dog work. It's still very achievable and something that you could, you know, work towards at, at a really steady pace. I think that's really, really important as well for giving, like you said, a progress ladder and giving some sense of direction because I know what it was like when I came into the gun dog world. You see a gun dog that can do all these things and you're like, oh, I've got to train that and that and that and that and that and that and that. And you don't see that they actually train layers on top of one another. You may be sometimes approach you when you're new as, oh, I'll go out now and I'll do some blinds today when, you know, your scene retrieves aren't really right there. But you think you've got to chuck it all in the mix from the beginning. What we're trying to say is that you need to do it a little, slightly differently. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the nice thing is the foundation level. If once you've done that, it gives you then the confidence to move on. I mean, we've gone as far at the moment as the intermediate level. And in the intermediate level, there is a short flying retrieve. Um, and we do have two dummy retrieves that obviously that sort of stuff isn't in the novice or the foundation level. And we do have natural barriers as well. So getting the dogs to cross natural barriers or incorporate um a jump or some water or something like that but what we tried really hard to do was understand that not everybody has um, access to great vast amounts of land to train on and so we tried to make it so that although we were progressing the dog and looking for a bit more distance on intermediate and adding in natural barriers we also made it so that it was quite variable on what people could use so that it's very achievable for people. Yeah, and that's really important because everything that we do is about 
setting people up to succeed and not to fail and never to fail and you can't fail the LWDG working dog certificate it's either a pass or please try again isn't it absolutely I mean there's obviously certain criteria because we wanted these to have real merit to them didn't we we wanted the certificates to really mean something so obviously if the dog is not able to do some of the criteria we can't pass that dog on it but we don't fail people we say please try again but we give feedback on the areas for improvement so that the owner of that dog or the handler of that dog knows what they need to improve to be able to pass it successfully on their next try so we don't just give the you know give out a, a fail or anything like that and leave the owner wondering what on earth it is they need to do we get please try again and we do actually give written feedback on on what they can do to ensure they pass next time for clarity if you get a please try again on one part you need to try it all again don't you absolutely yes it's done so if you were to go to a working test or do the kennel club working gun dog certificate um you have to, to pass you have to pass all the elements and you can't then just retake one part um so for what we wanted to do was make it so that it prepared people for the fact that if you're going to go and do the kennel club working gun dog certificate for instance you know sadly if you need to retake parts you retake the whole thing you can't just pick out the little bits that you were good at and then redo the other bits so so yeah you do have to redo the entire certificate when you try again and with regards to the intermediate you have to have passed the novice or the foundation to to move on yes absolutely so you know we want people to take those progressive steps and collect their certificates as they go along the way um so yeah you need to do intermediate you need to have done and passed novice so yeah it is a progressive thing to continue on through we also give out badges beautiful badges because we want you to be really proud of of, of what you've done how do people apply for the certificate what's involved in the process so on the new website you might want to talk through the new website and how they enter on the new website actually because <laughs> i i don't want to get this confused with how it was and, and give people the wrong information so the old website was very much built around using facebook groups to mm. support it we changed that because facebook tended to control who saw what all the time so we could have a member put something up that it showed to no one and then a member put something up that they showed to everyone and then there was this disparity of people feeling whether they were valued in the group or not depending on whether facebook had decided their content was of any value and it's not for facebook to decide that it's for us to decide that so the new website allows all the groups to be built in and a forum area to be built in. It also allows us to build the website in a way that the working dog certificates are built in. So in order to be able to access it, you do have to be a member of some sort. Now that can be a free member. That's absolutely fine, but you do have to have registered with us because we are leaving you into an area where there are forums and there are groups. Once you have registered with us as a free member or if you're a society member, uh, or society founder member you ladies have been around for over a thousand days now which blows my mind uh, if you're one of those ladies um you can then access the working dog certificate through what's called the library now the library used to be where we kept all our courses now we've made it a little bit clearer courses are where you find the courses and the library is where you find things like the working dog certificate all our newsletters all our free downloads basically all our podcasts our public podcasts that you're listening to now the private podcast is all in that area so you just go along go to the level that you want to go to go to, to section one step one whatever you want to call it it says number one and then follow the entry process for that the entry process is the same for all of them what will change is what level you click on so you click on foundation novice if you've passed one of one of those you can then click on to the intermediate does that sound clear on how to join Claire? yeah perfectly and i think and i think the nice thing is it's not like you've got to do your entry on a set day that people have time to to 
get to understand the criteria before they do their submission. So I think it's it's perfect, really, the way it works now. You can look at the checklist without entering. So you can see a checklist of what you're going to be asked to do at each level. Once you've entered, you will then be allowed access into the area with the videos demonstrating what you need to do and how to record it. It's been set up by Claire perfectly so that you can record it without having somebody else there to help you. You can pretty much do all of it without somebody there to help you up until intermediate level, is that right? Yeah, it, 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 it was done specifically so that if you didn't have somebody to work with you, um, it was easy enough to do it. And even on the intermediate, you don't need to have a helper for the exercises on there. There is a bit more um, distance required. And obviously it's a developmental stage on from the novice, but you don't need a helper still. Um, so it's just making sure you set up your, your camera, or your phone, whatever you're using to video it so that you can see the dog in those videos. Um, and ideally see you and the dog at all times. But if the dog goes out of shot very slightly, on a longer retrieve, we completely understand that. The important things are that we're seeing steadiness, we're seeing um, the retrieve, that the dog delivery of the retrieve um, and all of those things. So yeah, we purposefully built it that way so you didn't need a helper. So that was quite challenging from my perspective in setting those exercises and having to do the exercises with my own dogs for the demonstration videos. So I had to learn how people should angle their can their cameras to get the whole exercise in the shot as well. So it, it was a challenge, but fun. And we are going to, over time, put in the advanced, but we're not quite there yet. We want to make sure that everybody's gone through the, the other stages first, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And again, with advanced, it will be the next level. So at the moment, we're just planning the criteria and ensuring that it is a good progression, but not a massive jump. Um, and again, it's finding a way of looking more at more advanced training without the need for a helper or shop. Because again, it's about appreciating these are online entries and appreciating that some people entering may not be able to have private land to train on so wouldn't be able to do specific things so it's just making sure we get to see a good range of criteria but that um it's easy for anybody to enter we normally do it 100 percent online but on the end of the gun dog holiday that we've just come back from we did do them live didn't we and that was that was quite an interesting development for them it was and i'll be honest with you it was harder to do it in person for people i think one it's more nerve-wracking to do it in person in front of the judge on the day and i think also what i took into consideration when i was actually judging the people the ladies that were taking part and doing the certificates i took into um I took into account the fact that it was a first time effort as well. Whereas when you're doing it online and you get the criteria in advance, we know that people can go and practice the criteria before actually doing the assessment. So this was more raw. It was literally like rocking up on an assessment day and actually being put through your paces as a proper assessment. So I did take that into account. And I also took into account the, the level of the dogs that were on that gun dog holiday and their journey over the two days on the gun dog holiday. And I, I did, you know, in all honesty, ensure that I was giving everybody, regardless of where they were at with their training, a fair crack at doing the assessments. And I think I pulled that off okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really, really fair. Like a lot of people passed, some people had, please try again. When I read your feedback for Peter again, I thought it was fair and just. And I think that's very important to people. And I think the people who've come back to me um, from your replies have said, yeah, they completely understood it. Nobody felt that the marking had been unfair in any way. Because that, again, is really, really important to us. You've got, you've got to be fair with the marking. You've got to stay consistent. And, and that... That is the thing. You have to, you know, even when I watch the online videos, I have I have written down 
what is passable and what is not passable so that I don't waver on that. It has to be really consistent in what I'm looking for. A lot of the online course, uh, certificates are very much about self-honesty, aren't they? You know, you're meant to pra practice, but then when you press record, send us your first entry. I, I hope that many people do do that. I'm not naive enough to think that some maybe not, but the <laughs> idea of this certificate is to help you learn how to cope under the pressure of being, even just being recorded, because some people don't like that as much as they don't like a judge, is is to be honest and fair with yourself and have integrity with yourself, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's super important. You know, we do ask for the video entries to be the first attempt on that day. Um, and that's why I say on the day that we were running them in person, I did take into account that it literally was raw. There were no retakes, there were no redos. Um, whereas when you do a video entry, we are asking people for it to be their first attempt on that day. And you just hope that people are <laughs> honest with it. The way I look at it, the only benefit you'll get out of it is if you are honest with yourself because in some ways, we love it when ladies pass. It's absolutely fantastic. We love to celebrate this success. But I think that if you know that you've not followed the rules, the certificate and the badge will actually arrive at your home, meaning nothing because you'll know you weren't honest with it to start with. So I think that, um, I think near enough all of our ladies, if not all of our ladies are honest with it. And I think that's why they are so happy when they receive information that they've passed because they know that they did the work. Yeah, it, it is. And it is something to be really proud of when you get that achievement. It is something to be really, really proud of. They're not easy assessments by any by any means. I think they're fair to the level and standard that we set them at, but they're not easy. Um, and the past criteria is, is, is preparing your dog for, for real, real life stuff. A lady came up to me when we were doing them live and said, this is so much harder than first level assessments I've done in other places. And I was thinking about it, because I was thinking, oh, are we being a little bit hard? But then I thought, everything that we ask for in the foundations, they literally are the foundations. Your dog shouldn't be going on to harder, more difficult things, unless it's got these things nailed. Well, that was the thing. When we put together the criteria from the, for the foundation level, we actually based the criteria on it being so that anyone that had done our foundational gun dog course, the hot mess handler one, we actually based the foundation criteria on what people had needed to achieve doing or what they should have been learning and achieving through the hot mess handler course. But we didn't put the directions into the foundation one. We would save that until the novice. So really, anyone that's done Hot Mess Handler or is doing Hot Mess Handler are putting themselves in really good stead to have a dog that's able to do foundation level for sure. Yeah, because in the foundation, we do have stop, uh, sit, return and stop, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. And that is... For some people, like that is asking quite a lot. But like you said, if they've done the 81 exercises in Hot Miss Handler, worked through all the training, it won't be a breeze to them. I, I know because I went through it with you. Being able to transfer those skills over to the assessment and then knowing that you can get the foundation nailed and the novice nailed quite quickly one after another. Absolutely, yeah. The, the, the jump isn't huge from foundation. It's just that there are a few things in the novice that are not in foundation, including the directional control. So, um, yeah, it, it's totally achievable after doing hot mess handler to very quickly have your dog having the ability to do the foundation and the novice level for sure. What do you think are the benefits for those who've been through the certificate? I think that they watch their handling back themselves on a video, which is always very, very useful. 
you get to see so much more when you video yourself training your dog or working your dog you see your body language the dog's body language you can see areas for improvement straight away just by videoing yourself even without anybody else looking at that video you can do that for yourself I think it gives you a good benchmark for where you're at with your training, what needs maybe a little bit more polish or a little bit more finesse and what areas are really, really strong. And then gives you the confidence to start developing your feel, your skill sets with your dog further. Because without knowing where you're at and having that benchmark, it can feel very difficult to know if something you're about to try with your dog, if your dog's ready for it or not. So I think by following that criteria, you have a really good understanding of where your dog is in the training and what you can progress to. So it it lets you know where you're at. It's a really good way of measuring where you and your dog are at. I think it definitely builds self-confidence, but they also have the added advantage of the videos go in front of you. And whilst you are judging them, you're also able to help boost their confidence and knowing that they have actually managed to achieve those things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And it is, again, getting that feedback. Say there is a not, please try again. They're getting feedback on what needs what needs that finesse, what needs that little bit more work. Um, and it, it's very constructive feedback. I'm not mean. <laughs> and you also think them how to put it right, which I think... For a lot of times that you are competing, and we we have tried to make it as much as we can a a competitive feel. When you're competing, you don't normally get that level. You know, a judge won't spend time explaining to you how to put it right on the next attempt. They they are they don't have enough time for that. Whereas with the feedback that you give them, they've got things that they can go away and actually do, can't they? Mm. The thing is. I totally get it. I am. I love teaching. I love training dogs and I love teaching people. I am incredibly, I've said this on Dog and Ducks. I've said this on other things. I'm incredibly nervous at working tests. I've done very few working tests. You know, I'm not a master at working tests, that's for sure, because my nerves massively get in the way. I get very self-conscious and I make a lot of handling mistakes that I wouldn't make either teaching or training. And I've done the gun dog working certificate, the kennel club one with all of my dog, well, with the two girls, John did it with dude. And I didn't get so nervous on that, which is really strange. But actual working tests, I find absolutely terrifying. So for me, when we did these certificates, I really took on board that I wanted to build people's confidence so that it might help them to go out and do working tests as well because they've watched themselves, they've had feedback, they know how to improve. Um, And I I hoped it would be a big confidence boost for people because real life working test scenarios, I just find absolutely terrifying. I really, really do. And I'm so honest about that. I think you're absolutely right. And if we look at the people who've done like foundation, then novice and intermediate, they put in a lot of work around those certificates. I can almost see their confidence building because mm-hmm. as they've felt ready to go for it, it means they've put in a set amount of hours, a set amount of work. They go for it, they pass, they put in another set amount of hours, another set of amount of work. They pass, so they're almost going, okay, and that next step, and next step. And it's giving them something to work towards. Even if you just print off the checklist and say, right, this is what I need to get my dog to do before I go to the next bit, it would be incredibly valuable. Absolutely, yeah, 100%. Fantastic. Well, I hope listening to Claire and I talk about the Ladies Working Dog Group Working Dog Certificate has given you some information that you might want to take away. As I said, please go and download the checklist if that's just the place you want to start. You are more than welcome to come and do the Working Dog Certificates if you want. How they work is you can enter now at any time of the month. You will only get your results on the 7th of the month. So Claire will take a month's worth and then she marks them between the 1st and 7th. So if you join on the 2nd, you won't get it till the following 7th. But if you joined the month before, 
you will be all judged together. You have 14 days in which to complete your assessment. You'll be sent emails explaining what to do, where to start. Reminder, 48 hours tell you you have 48 hours to put your bum into gear and get it in if you haven't got it in already. And um, we may look at this year or potentially next year to some more live face-to-face -face ones where we'll do training in the morning, training through with what we're going to be assessing on and then the assessments in the afternoon. Is there anything you want to add that to that now, Claire, before I finish this wonderful podcast? No, I think we've covered it in really good depth. I would just say to everybody, it's definitely worth looking into and definitely worth, you know, putting it into your training program to do the certificates because it, it does give you something to work towards. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time as always. Thank you very much to the listeners and we hope to speak to you all next week. Thank you for listening to LWDG Pod Dog with me, Joe Parrott. Now we all know training a dog takes time, energy and patience, but our lives can be really, really busy. Don't worry, the LWDG has got you covered. Join us for our free planning workshop where we'll show you how to use short 10 minute training sessions each day to fast forward your dog's education. Our experts have years of experience in training dogs and will help you get started on the right foot. Register now and start making progress with your furry friend today. Go to our Facebook page, The Ladies Working Dog Group, and click on the pinned post or visit www.thelwdg.com.